This is breaking news. Happening right now, Representative Richie Torres and other local and state officials are holding a briefing to announce new recovery and assistance efforts to aid the victims of the deadly Bronx high rise fire. As many of you know, we've seen the deadliest fire in the history of New York City in the past 30 years since Happy Land in 1990. It has left a death count of 19 and counting, including nine children, and a patient count of about 63 at a time when hospitals are sh struggling with shortages brought on by Omicron. You know, the two values that are near and dear to most of our hearts is our family and our home. And to lose both in the span of a single tragedy is traumatic and terrifying to an extent that few of us could imagine. And so I encourage every New Yorker who is in a position to donate to go to the mayor's fund and contribute and support these families in need. Uh, do unto others as they would have them do unto you. As many of you know, the fire originated from an electric space heater in a duplex on the third floor of a 19-story building, Twin Parks Northwest. And even though the fire was largely limited to the third floor, both the apartment door and the stairwell door were left open, mm -hmm. causing the smoke to spread widely and rapidly throughout the building. Mm -hmm. And since the building has no fire escapes, mm -hmm. and since the stairwell was full of smoke, mm -hmm. the tenants had no means of escape. Mm -hmm. So many tenants became seriously ill mm -hmm. and then died as a result of severe smoke inhalation, as a result of cardiac and respiratory arrest. And so we want to send two messages. First, be careful with the use of space heaters, which are an extreme fire hazard. Right? Heating fires are the second most common category of fires in homes. And most home heating fires involve the use of space heaters. And according to the Commission, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, uh, there are 25,000 residential fires annually associated with the use of space heaters. So if you're going to use them, please use them properly and carefully, but I would recommend that you would avoid them altogether. Second, in the event of a fire, close the door in order to prevent the spread of the fire. If fire and smoke conditions are left to spread, then lives will be lost because the smoke will quickly fill up the stairwell and tenants will quickly lose what could be their only means of access. And so we're here as elected officials from every level of government, from the federal to the state to the city level, from Congress to the state legislature to the New York City Council to the office of the Bronx Borough President. We're coming together to form a coalition that has four objectives. Our first objective is to ensure that every victim has access to services. A service center has been established at Monroe College. Uh, we have gotten outreach from a whole host of non-for-profits, from Acacia to the Bronx Community Foundation, to UJA, to Catholic Charities, willing to offer services to those in need, and we will coordinate those services accordingly. Our second objective is to ensure that those who have been displaced in the short term have the ability to return to their homes as swiftly and as safely as possible if they so choose. It is worth noting that the property owner arranged for all of the short-term displaced to have hotel rooms here in the Bronx, 140 hotel rooms, were made available to the displaced here in the Bronx. Our third objective is to ensure that the long-term displaced, those living on the third floor, have access to permanent housing. And there are landlords, there are owners and operators of affordable housing who have reached out offering apartments to those in need. Again, we will collectively coordinate. Our final and most important objective is to pass legislation. We're convening a federal, state, and city task force on fire safety that will examine what policies could be put in place at every level of government to improve fire safety in our homes, not only in the Bronx, but in the city, in the state, and in the country. We're going to examine issues relating to the manufacturing of space heaters, the use of space heaters in residential homes, sprinkler systems, self-closing doors, 
fire and smoke alarm systems. We have to ensure that the housing stock is brought into, 20, into the 21st century when it comes to fire safety. The Bronx is no stranger to deadly fires. The four deadliest fires in New York City in the past 30 years have all been in the Bronx. From Happy Land in 1990, which had 87 fatalities, to Woody Crest in 2007, which had 10 fatalities, to Belmont in 2017, which had 13 fatalities, which I lived through, to Twin Parks Northwest in 2022, which has 19 fatalities and counting. We have to ensure that the lessons learned from past and present tragedy become laws that prevent future tragedy. And that is the mission of our coalition. So without further ado, I want to introduce the Bronx Borough President, Vanessa Gibson. Good morning, and I want to thank Congressman Richie Torres for convening all of the elected officials. I am Vanessa L. Gibson, the newly elected Bronx Borough President. It is my first week on the job, and I am so devastated at this horrific five-alarm fire that we faced here in the Bronx in the Fordham community on yesterday. I want to join my elected officials in saluting the incredible efforts of our first responders. Over 200 plus firefighters responded within minutes to this five alarm fire. And we saw images of them helping residents and children escape this horrific fire. We also want to recognize the NYPD and Office of Emergency Management and all of the residents of Twin Parks that came together to support their neighbors. 19 fatalities. 10 of which are adults and nine babies, the youngest being a three-year-old baby. Our hearts go out to these families. Our hearts mourn the loss of our beloved children and their family members. And there are several dozen residents right now in area hospitals that are in serious and critical condition. And we are offering our prayers of healing and strength to all of those residents that are fighting for their lives. I, too, am no stranger to fires. I lived through 2007 with the Magasa family from Mali in Highbridge, who were devastated by a fire that was also related to the malfunctioning of an electric space heater. We have a problem in this city with space heaters and the incorrect usage of them. And so I'm grateful that we are assembling this coalition because we need to identify short-term and long-term goals. As Bronx Borough President, our immediate priority is making sure that every resident, every household is provided the support, the social emotional support, the trauma informed care, all of the social issues we know families are facing today. These families were racing for their lives. They were running for security with themselves and their children. So I just want everyone to understand the magnitude of this five alarm fire that this city has not experienced in over 30 years. This is unimaginable. It's devastating and it's heartbreaking. But we are determined to rebuild and heal as a community, as a borough and as a city. There has been an overwhelming amount of support and love from New Yorkers, from elected officials, Governor Kathy Hochul, Mayor Eric Adams, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, all of our elected officials have stepped up. But equally as important, New Yorkers have stepped up and they've offered financial support. They have provided a wealth of resources for residents and their families. So we know we have to deal with the immediate needs on the ground in making sure that every resident and family is provided with temporary and long-term housing. I am so thankful to this school. This local school here has been amazing. We left at 1 a.m. this morning after the last client was given hotel accommodations, and the school stayed open until 3 a.m. to make sure that if anyone was released from the hospital, they had somewhere to go for the night. We want to assure residents of Twin Parks that you are not alone. We are here with you every step of the way for you and your children. We also want to emphasize, because this is a building of working class residents, of immigrant residents, predominantly from West Africa, 
from Gambia. We want to let residents know that your status does not matter. No one is going to be evicted from their homes. We will guarantee that you will have a permanent home, whether it's here at Twin Parks or elsewhere in the Bronx. And then as we heal, as we mourn, as we build, we know we have to deal with this from a policy issue. We have to look at regulating safe space heaters in a more efficient and effective way. We know we have to emphasize fire education and fire safety. We have to work with community partners, clergy, and faith leaders, all of our CBOs. We know that there are short and long-term goals that we will identify working together under this coalition. But I am grateful for the elected officials that stand at my side, that have been with us every step of the way. Congressman Richie Torres, Councilmember Oswald Feliz, Councilmember Piarina Sanchez, Assemblymember Udelka Tapia, Senator Gustavo Rivera. We have talked around the clock, and we're going to stay here until we are no longer needed. But even as we may leave, we are not going to leave the residents of Twin Parks. And so I am grateful for the assembling of this coalition because we need resources at a federal, state, and a local level. Because we know that the fires we have faced, there are underlying issues that we are facing every day with fire alarms and sprinkler systems and exits and heat and hot water and basic necessities that every resident and tenant of New York City should be afforded. And so I am thankful and I look forward to working with my partners in government. We will have more announcements to come, but for now I say thank you. We look forward to the work ahead and may we continue to pray for all of the residents and families here at Twin Parks and remind them that they are never alone as Bronxites and New Yorkers. We are Bronx strong and we are New York strong. Thank you, Congressman Torres and all of my colleagues in government. Oswald, you want to... And now let me introduce <coughs> our two council members that represent this area here in Fordham. Uh, we are grateful they have been with us around the clock. I want to introduce of District 15, Councilmember Oswald Feliz. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here today. I'm Councilmember Oswald Feliz. For the families that were affected by the fire yesterday, one message. We're gonna be with you every single step of the way to make sure you receive everything you need, and we're gonna make sure that no family is left behind. For the over 200 firefighters that responded, we, we watched them risk their own lives to save the lives of four-year-olds. We're thankful, we're grateful, and we're so honored and privileged to have you on our side. Now, I'll say what we all know. The Bronx has a lot of challenges. Fire is one of them. Some of the worst fires in our city have been right here in the Bronx, not too far from here, by the way. As Congressman Torres uh, summarized, in Belmont, approximately 13 lives lost. In Woodycrest, approximately 10 lives lost. 30 years ago, in Happy Land, approximately 90 lives lost. And now yesterday, 19 lives lost. We need a takeaway from this. We need to see what went wrong. We need, to, we, we, we need to learn our lessons, and we need to see how we can move forward to make sure this never happens again. And for that reason, I'm honored and privileged to be working with all of my colleagues to create a task force, a fire safety task force, to make sure that we never, ever have a similar case again. So thank you, Congressman Torres, Borough President Vanessa Gibson, Perino Sanchez, Council Member, and all of my colleagues who are part of this uh, task force. Uh, we're gonna be working around the clock uh, to make sure that we could see what lessons we can learn from this, whether it's lessons regarding space heaters, whether it's lessons regarding self-closing doors, which is already legally required in the city of New York, and we're going to see what we can do at the city level, state level, and at the federal level to make sure this doesn't happen again. And again, to the families affected, we're going to be working you, with you around the clock, literally around the clock, to make sure that no family is left behind and to make sure that every family gets the resources they need, including housing, including food, including services, clothing, and everything else. Thank you so much. And I would like to introduce uh, my colleague in government, uh, Council Member Pierina Sanchez. Uh, good morning, everyone. 
First, I want to thank uh, Congressman Richie Torres for convening us for this important task. And I want to thank our borough president, Vanessa Gibson, who was here until 1 a.m. last night, which is not at all typical for the way that she has always responded to community emergencies. And to my colleague whose district this fire, this tragedy has happened in, Oswald, I am here with you as a sister, and we are here together as one Bronx. The first thing I want to say is to the families. We are so, so deeply sorry and here with you to support you every single step of the way. The Bronx, unfortunately, is no stranger to fires. We have been facing fires since the neglect of the 1970s, the 1980s. In fact, here in this cafeteria yesterday where I attended fifth grade, I spoke to families who said, wow, I'm, I'm bringing back this, these smells, these memories, this is bringing back trauma. And that is what we're facing here today, is we're facing a trauma. And so I want to make sure that we are sending a message, as the Congressman has said, that we are going to be extremely vigilant, that we are going to leave no question unanswered. What did go wrong in this building? Why were space heaters being used? Why are they being used in different parts of the city? What are the codes that we have in our buildings in the city of New York indicating and causing as the realities that we face in our buildings and in our homes? How can we make sure that the response is as robust as it needs to be? To the FDNY, those 200 firefighters who risked their lives, jumped right into the heat of those flames, thank you to all of our first responders, to our EMS workers, and to all of the city agencies that were here so swiftly to make sure that as a machine, the New York City apparatus was responsive. Thank you. And to say this uh, for a second in Spanish, quiero agradecerle al congresista Richie Torres por reunirnos hoy aquí a todos. Y para, para que nosotros podamos decir que sí estamos poniendo atención, que sí cuando ocurre una tragedia como la que ocurrió ayer aquí en este edificio, nosotros vamos a responder a todo nivel de gobierno, federal, estatal y también aquí en la municipalidad. Nosotros estamos en unión y vamos a hacer cada pregunta que se necesite, se necesite hacer. ¿Qué ocurrió en ese edificio? ¿Qué ¿Qué regulación no estaba? ¿Cuáles errores cometimos? ¿Y cómo podemos prevenir una tragedia así para que nunca pueda ocurrir de nuevo? En, en el Bronx conocemos demasiado la tragedia y estamos aquí para responder. Gracias, congresistas, y a todos mis colegas. Um, um. Thank, thank you. So I've been asked just to s summarize briefly, because um, I think ABC and NBC arrived. Uh, first, I want to note that Twin Parks Northwest is both project-based Section 8, which is federal, and a state Michelama. And so there's a legislative solution cannot come from a single level of government. It has to come from every level of government. I, as a congressman, have jurisdiction over federal housing programs, the state legislature has jurisdiction over state housing programs, and the city council has jurisdiction over fire, housing, and building codes. And a solution is going to require every level of government. So as I said earlier, we're going to, we are forming a coalition of, of elected officials from every level of government that will have four objectives. The first objective is to ensure that every victim has access to services. A service center has been established, and we're going to mobilize a whole range of not-for-profits to provide assistance to the victims. The second objective is to ensure that the short-term displaced have the ability to return to their homes as swiftly and as safely as possible. And it's worth noting that the property owner arranged for 140 hotel rooms here in the Bronx to be available to those displaced in the short term. Those who are displaced in the long run, those living on the third floor, we want to ensure that they have access to permanent housing elsewhere. There are landlords who have reached out to us offering apartments to those in need. We will coordinate those arrangements. And then finally, our final and most important objective is to establish 
a federal, state, and city legislative task force to examine what policies can be implemented to improve fire safety in our homes. We're going to examine issues relating to the manufacturing of space heaters, the use of space heaters in residential homes, fire and smoke alarms, sprinklers, self-closing doors, and fire safety in general. And the purpose of the task force is to come here within a few days or a few weeks with actual recommendations that we can introduce as law. But our mission is to translate the lessons learned from tragedy past and present into laws that will prevent tragedy in the future. So we'd be happy to take whatever questions you have. How many families are involved? Two years ago, you were a primary co-sponsor in the city council of a bill that mandated that apartment doors must close automatically to prevent tragedy with the one that occurred here yesterday. Are you confident that this new, this rule that went into effect last summer is being enforced to the fullest extent of the law? And to the council members here today, would like to know if you plan on investigating the enforcement of this rule? Uh, I'll start and then I'll, I'll hand it over to the council members. Um, look, a law is only as good as it's for an enforcement. So no, no matter what law we pass, we're going to have to ensure that we have enough building inspectors and fire inspectors and housing inspectors to hold landlords accountable. We need rigorous code enforcement. Uh, the property owner claims that these, that the building did in fact have self-closing doors, but that's the unanswered question at the heart of the investigation, the fire marshal's investigation. If these doors were self-closing, then why was the apartment door left open? Why was the stairwell door left open? So the, the, the claims that are being made about the self-closing doors are incompatible with, with the reality that these doors were open during the fire, allowing the, the smoke to, to spread widely. Do you want to add anything about uh, city yep, council? Have, have, yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the question. And, and, and that's exactly correct. One of the questions is uh, whether, we, whether we had uh, self-closing doors and whether they were functioning properly. Um, we already have laws that legally require that we have those um, self-closing doors. Um, I think one thing that we should look into um, or one thing that I'll be working in the city council is looking to enforce those laws, uh, specifically enforcement of those laws, including potentially um, requiring that when an HPD inspector enters a building, automatically in inspect for that. And also if they do find that uh, there are some self-closing doors violations, requiring a, a re-inspection within 24 hours, reaching out to the landlord or the management company, and potentially also increasing the fines if those violations are not, uh, our violations are not corrected within 24 hours. So we'll be looking into all those uh, matters. And I don't know if Karina wants to yeah. add to How that. How many families are involved, uh, both short-term and long-term, and what is the outlook for getting the short-term people back into their homes? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't know the specific numbers, but there are 120 units in the building. A majority of the residents have been given hotel accommodations over four different hotels here in the Bronx. Uh, we will allow them to remain into the, in those hotels as long as necessary. We are awaiting word from the Department of Buildings and FDNY today on whether families will be able to re-enter. We fully believe and are very optimistic that a majority of residents whose apartments are not damaged will be able to re-enter, predominantly the higher floors above third. Um, re long re-enter today. today. Yes, later on this afternoon, we're waiting where we had a meeting this morning with interagencies and we're getting briefed uh, throughout the day. Uh, for the third floor, which is the most impacted and the most damaged, those apartments obviously have severe damage and are not habitable. So we will be working with those units and those families on permanently relocating them or temporarily if they choose to come back. We want to be very clear that we're not forcing anyone out of Twin Parks. If they want to relocate permanently, we will accommodate that. But for those that want to return, we will allow them that opportunity. And we're working with management and landlord and there are other buildings in this portfolio throughout the Bronx that land uh, the residents will have access to so, uh, uh, let me, I want to go to the Sorry, next and I just want to be clear that we as elected officials are going to guarantee that those who have been displaced in the long run will have permanent housing elsewhere that is a guarantee that we're making right. publicly at the moment Congressman, doesn't the use of space heaters to begin with point to more systemic issues about heating in the building and is that going to be a concentration Correct. here yeah well my understanding is that the building did in fact have heat. Those were the reports that we heard. But even if the landlord is providing the legal minimum, that's often too low, that's often too little heat for a senior citizen. 
So if you're a senior citizen who's hypersensitive to cold, you might be tempted to turn to the use of a space heater. So we may have to, you know, the city council Where might have to re-examine yeah. the housing maintenance code when it comes to heat and hot water Correct. levels. Congressman, while there is a city law about these doors, if this is a federal building, isn't there yeah. now a question of look, if they don't have to do that because it's a federal building? Look, we're not, we want to finalize recommendations, but my initial thought is that um, as a condition of receiving federal funding, every building should have 21st century standards of fire safety, such as self-closing doors or sprinkler systems. Uh, some of those measures could come at the expense of the landlord, and some of them might have to be subsidized by the government. Sprinkler systems are, are often prohibitively expensive, but self-closing doors should be the standard everywhere in the United States. Can I add something? Yeah. And just to, to add to that, um, this building was built in 1973, which, it, which means that they were grandfathered in and they don't have the requirement of having a sprinkler system. So it makes these other pieces of the code all that more important. And that's why this task force is so important so that we can make sure that we're working together to, so that our codes are talking to each other. But one thing I, we want to, to in this point, we might have to clarify in federal law that federal affordable housing developments are subject to local fire codes and housing codes and building codes because there's a lack of clarity in that respect. And any other questions? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. Oh, no, I'll, 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 I'll speak to you first. No, she just want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Okay, sure. When we remain, the ones that's able to remain in their apartment, are we going to have accurate heat? Right. Are we going to have the windows are busted? Yeah. The windows are busted. Is the heat going to be good? Look, we're, 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 we, we will, we're going to organize a meeting between the tenants and the property owner to address whatever issues, whatever concerns you have about the building. Our commitment to the building is long term, so we're not going anywhere. So, uh, I just want to, yep, sir. Are you a, a press or? No. I'll speak to you privately. I'll definitely. Yeah. What, what? There are reports that the Section 8 vouchers are non transferable. Does that mean they're, they're not vouchers? So, there are two types of Section 8. Vouchers travel with the tenants, project based rental assistance is built into the unit. This is project based Section 8. So, will they be able to keep their Section 8 vouchers even if, if, you, if you were unable or unwilling to return to We're going to have to find them housing elsewhere with just as much affordability. Oh, right. So, the goal is a transfer. Yeah. Project based building to another project. But you're right, we're going to have to find them a Section 8 property. Right. So. right. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank okay, you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, everyone.